The target of this block technique is to inject local anesthetic in the vicinity of the inferior alveolar nerve just before it enters into the mandibular foramen to reach the mandibular canal. This image shows the local anesthetic after it has been injected. Notice that some of the local anesthetic also diffuses to the nearby lingual nerve, so many patients will manifest anesthesia of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, all the lingual gingiva, and the mucosa of the floor of the mouth, all are supplied by the lingual nerve. As described earlier, the target of the block is to place local anesthetic just above this foramen. This foramen is called the mandibular foramen and it leads into the mandibular canal. The inferior alveolar nerve enters into this foramen. So by placing the local anesthetic here just above the mandibular foramen, we ensure that the local anesthetic passes the inferior alveolar nerve as well as, as well as lingual nerve in most cases as mentioned earlier. To understand the distribution of anesthesia produced by the inferior alveolar nerve block, it is easier to understand it in terms of bony areas and soft tissue parts. Bony areas that get anesthetized include mandibular teeth with the midline, body of the mandible, as well as the inferior portion of the ramus. Soft tissues that get anesthetized include the skin and the mucous membranes of the lower lip, the skin of the chin, and the labial gingiva of the anterior teeth. In addition, as mentioned earlier, the lingual nerve often gets anesthetized, leading to anesthesia of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, all the lingual gingiva, and the mucous membrane of the floor of the mouth. This is the ramus of the mandible. This is the anterior border of the ramus. The anterior border of the ramus features a concavity. This concavity is called the coronoid notch. We start our block by identifying this coronoid notch by means of the thumb. The height of the injection coincides with the midpoint of the fingernail. The patient is asked to open her mouth wide open. The current light notch of the anterior ramus of the mandible is palpated. As noted earlier, the height of the injection coincides with the height of the fingernail tip. The next step is to identify a soft tissue wall in the oral cavity called a tergomandibular raphe and denoted by the red arrows. The identification of this raphe is critical for the success of this block procedure. Just lateral to the tergomandibular raphe, there is a depression called the tergomandibular depression. Right now, the cap needle is inserted into this tergomandibular depression so that you can identify it clearly. The exact entry point is the intersection between the line we drew first from the height of the nail tip and the tergomandibular depression. Right now the needle tip is in the exact entry point. Here is a live block demonstration. The index of the non-dominant hand 
is rested into the coronoid notch or the anterior ramus of the mandible. The needle comes from the contralateral side, from the corner of the mouth, and it is inserted into the tergomandibular depression and advance for 20 to 25 millimeters until bone is contacted. Once bone is contacted, the needle is withdrawn slightly. Then injection of two-thirds to one cartridge of local anesthetic is performed after negative aspiration. Then the needle is withdrawn.